The Hunter Call of the Wild is a game with tons of DLCs. In fact, there are over 50 DLCs you can choose from to enhance your playing experience. But, as you likely know, those come with a price tag. Throughout the game's 7 plus year life cycle, new content has been released that renders some older equipment obsolete. But there are a few items that have stood the test of time, making it difficult, especially for newer players, to know which DLCs to purchase. Today, we'll be taking a look at what are, in my opinion, the best DLCs to buy in 2024, whether you're a new player just getting into the game, or a veteran looking to change it up. So one quick caveat before we get started. I won't be talking about map DLCs in this particular video. Everyone's going to have their own personal preference on what they want to hunt anyway, but if you click this video looking for the best map to buy, it is worth knowing you can actually play any map that you don't own by going into multiplayer. Now keep in mind, someone in the server has to own the DLC, or the game will just close 15 minutes after the last person who owned it disconnects, but it's a great way to experience each map, and you can choose to purchase your favorites based on actually getting to hunt them. Now, it's time to talk about the best DLCs to buy. If you're on console, go ahead and skip this first one. The Tents and Ground Blinds number 1 DLC, which came out in April of 2017, actually was a part of the base game releases for both Xbox and PlayStation. For PC players, you'll probably want to go ahead and pick this one up for $3.99 US if you haven't already. Tents allow you to make 16 placeable spawn points per map. If you find a place that you want to hunt later, throw a tent down and fast travel there at any time. As for Ground Blinds, they have their uses. One cool factor is that they reduce the hunting pressure caused by shooting an animal by 75%, which is quite important when you're hunting the same area over and over again. And of course they help to hide you if you're calling animals into close range. That said, it's the tents that really make this one worth it. Next up is the Modern Rifle Pack. Also at $3.99 US, this pack features three AR platform rifles, a 22 long rifle, a 223, and a 308. There are a few reasons actually that these three weapons and therefore this pack is the best value of any weapon pack in the game, so let's talk about that. Firstly, the 308 is a fantastic weapon. It's ethical for classes 4 to 8, which allows you to take anything from deer and sheep to elk and moose with it. But plenty of weapons fall into that category. What makes the 308 the best value specifically for new players is that the ammo doesn't need to be unlocked via rifle score. You can buy this pack at level 1, earn a few hundred cash to be able to buy a box of bullets, and you've got your hands on a lightweight, high power, semi-automatic rifle that allows you to hunt most big game animals effectively. On top of that, compared to every other rifle that covers animal classes 4 to 8, you're not sacrificing power to use the 308. It's right on par with weapons like the 30-06 in this game, as well as being lighter, meaning it takes up less of your inventory space and having a faster fire rate. Turns out, that can actually be pretty useful. The 223 is the odd one out in this pack. It is of course semi-automatic, but the 223 in this game is basically just a slightly weaker version of your starting 243. Personally, I would just carry the 243 for that added bit of power, but if you want the fast fire rate or need to save a tiny bit of inventory space, you can go with the 223. Much like the 308, the 223 ammo is unlocked by default, so you're able to use it from the get-go if you decide to go that route. Finally, the 22. Having a 22 in the Hunter Call of the Wild is basically a must. Of course, it's a great option for all Class 1 animals. From ducks and rabbits all the way up to turkeys and geese, it's a fantastic option when you're shooting these animals at a distance beyond what can be achieved with birdshot, which, by the way, also needs to be unlocked. Buckshot is the base game shotgun ammo, and keep in mind, rifle score and shotgun score are separate. You need to unlock that birdshot by using buckshot or purchasing something like the duck and cover DLC which comes with 20 gauges and ammo that doesn't need to be unlocked. Point being, the 22 is a great choice for multiple reasons when it comes to actually shooting class 1 animals. Its ammo also doesn't need to be unlocked, so you can use it from the jump just like the 308, so long as you can afford the ammo. Here's the thing though, arguably the 22's greatest use isn't for shooting game animals, but shooting the ground. An extremely common and useful tactic, something called the 22 strat here in the community, is to just shoot the ground near an animal that isn't offering you a good shot angle. 
the bull is striking the ground will alert the animal, causing it to spin around and usually offering you a much better shot angle. Just keep in mind you can't be too close to the animal or it's going to spook from the combo of the rifle report and the bullet striking the ground near it. All in all, this pack has two extremely useful weapons that fit well into any hunter's loadout, seasoned or newbie. Most weapon packs generally have just one true standout weapon, this one having two really puts its value over the top. If you want to complete your collection of AR platform rifles, I would definitely recommend picking up the high caliber weapon pack for $4.99 as well. We won't spend as much time on this one, because as I mentioned, typically weapon packs only have one true standout, and I would say that applies here for the 300, but it's just that good. Without a doubt, it is far and away the very best option for class 9 animals in all of the Hunter Call of the Wild. And I do want to clarify, the ammo like the other DLC weapons is unlocked from the beginning. It didn't used to work that way with the 300 board action from the Yukon Valley DLC, so if you've been around the game for a while, that's an important change. Much like the 308 from earlier, once you can afford the ammo, you can buy it immediately even at level 1. The 4570 single shot handgun gives you additional class 9 coverage, and it is super useful, given its inventory capacity of just 1. It also uses rifle scopes as opposed to the handgun scope which, you guessed it, must be unlocked with handgun score. So no worries there for this handgun. Finally, the 10 gauge semi-automatic shotgun. As shotguns go, it's quite solid. All the ammo comes unlocked as standard, so you don't need to worry about being limited to only buckshot here. I will say the slugs are a bit underwhelming, but frankly, if you're following along with this video, you have far better options for big game than 10 gauge slugs anyway. With just these two weapon packs, you have an excellent choice of weaponry for every species in the game, as well as some additional options for loadouts where perhaps you're carrying a tent or additional gear and can't fit a bunch of heavy guns into your inventory. Next up, the Bloodhound. I would say this one is more for newer players, as learning how to track animals in this game can take some time. I want to make one thing very clear here, Bloodhounds only track blood, they will not track an animal if you haven't shot it. The best part about them though, is if you do shoot an animal and it goes down, the Bloodhound is going to find it. It literally does not matter how difficult of a track it is, if you get your Bloodhound on that trail, it will find the animal. As your Bloodhound grows and levels up, you can choose its traits to suit your preferences, whether that is to really lean into the track inside, or maybe a little more fun with the companion aspect. If you've been playing for a bit and aren't having any issues tracking, save your 399. If you're struggling to find the animals you've shot however, this dog can help you out big time. They've got some additional features too like whining when a nearby animal's alert, which can really help if you don't realize you're about to spook it, as well as barking to warn you of an attacking animal. I will say, You'll notice in many of my videos that I don't bring my Bloodhound with me on hunts. It's hardly necessary, but it can be very useful and I thought it was worth mentioning here. And speaking of DLCs that are more on the optional side, Trophy Lodges. There are two Trophy Lodge DLCs in the game, each is $3.99 US. Recently Expansive Worlds added a free Trophy Lodge that's kinda small and quite limited, so you have that option as well, but if you want a larger, more customizable lodge, I absolutely recommend Saseka Safari. It's got more space than Spring Creek Manor with a few more plaques and one more stand on top of the ability to display your weapons, but more importantly, it has the massive platforms, which allow you to display a number of multi mounts, such as the very popular Breadwinner mount, featuring three lions and a cape buffalo on those. Spring Creek Manor platforms aren't as big, meaning any multi mount labeled XXL cannot be placed on it. Obviously you don't need a trophy lodge to play the game, but for me personally, my enjoyment of the game has been increased exponentially by owning a trophy lodge. Spending hours on end, hunting for a trophy animal is made far more rewarding when you're able to taxidermy them and display them forever in your own personal lodge. I saved this one for the end as it has the least to do with the actual gameplay, but I couldn't honestly release this video without stating that I think it's one of the best purchases you can make in the Hunter Call of the Wild. For me, 
I think these five DLCs generate 99% of the enjoyment I get from the game. And at full price, they total just over 20 bucks. Now, of course the maps are a little more expensive and you may eventually want to add some of those to your collection. But as I said earlier, my best advice would be play each one in multiplayer. Sometimes, unfortunately, putting up with some of the disconnects and annoyances multiplayer can bring and choose your favorite or favorites from those experiences. Even potentially wait for a sale and then go ahead and buy them for yourself. On that note, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what your list of best DLCs to buy in Hunter Call of the Wild is down in the comments below and if this video was helpful. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.